Hi, Will from Music Tech here at the NAMM show with Joe from AMS Neve. Joe, the RMX 16 is back. It's back. Why now? Uh, well, the original unit from 1982, really, really popular at the time. It mm -hmm. went on to define the, the sound of the decade. Artists such as Genesis, uh, Culture Club went on to adopt it. The famous non-lin reverb mm -hmm. sound can be heard on drum tracks spanning the past four decades. And we actually still service quite a few of the original units. Oh, really? So uh, they're still very, very popular, but they haven't been in development since the 80s. So the demand was there, but the product availability wasn't. So we worked a little with, the, with Universal Audio several years ago to look back at the schematics of the original unit, go back through those algorithms, find out how we could create a software plugin version of that. So we used the exact same algorithms found in the original unit. Uh, our team worked closely with Universal Audio to put that together, and that right. went on to become one of the best selling plugins on their platform. So following that, we decided, well, why not bring this back into a hardware format, bring it back out into the real world once again. Uh, we didn't want to just do a copy of the, the original unit. I know 19 inch rack units are still very popular, but 500 series is where it's at at the moment. We already have a very successful 500 range and we wanted to do something a bit different. So we thought we'd bring it back in 500 series format. And so internally, is it the original microprocessor or is it using the, uh, the modeling that was done with Universal Audio? It's using similar modeling. It's, uh, we, we have obviously a modern chip. We can't get hold of those 1980s uh, digital converters anymore. They don't, don't exist. So we're using a modern chip to, and a high sample rate, high bit depth to create the cleanest possible platform to then model the, uh, the, the DSP of the original. So we, right. w once the DSP kicks in, uh, we go back down to the 18 kilohertz bandwidth of the original unit, of course, yeah. and we actually model the input-output stage on this unit too. So there are huh. subtle differences between the original, the plug-in, and the 500 series. Okay. But we, we've created a very faithful recreation that models the exact way that the original units reacted. Excellent. Well, can we have a little listen to it then? Of course, yeah, no cool. problem. So, so I've got some drums playing here. Now, this is the, the non-lin, the famous uh, non-linear reverb pattern. Uh, what we have on, on the RMX-16 is the original unit had uh, nine algorithms, and there were an, an additional nine that you could get that were uh, aftermarket algorithms. Uh -huh. So we have all of those 18 in this unit. Okay. Uh, this is the non-lin. If I go over to... Um, now, that's the ambience program. That was another very popular one at the time. And what you can do here is, because of, because of all, the, uh, all the parameters are displayed on the same screen at the same time, and we all they all have their own key, it's very easy to adjust parameters while you're dialing them in by ear. I can adjust the decay times. And then, if once I get to a sweet spot that I really like, I can store that in up to 100 uh, user presets that are within the device. Excellent. Okay, and so obviously you've got the, the keypad as well for punching in uh, yep. your Yeah, we, we had to have those classic features. The, yeah. the thing that really defines what the RMX-16 was, was the calculator-style keypad on the front. So you can use those to dial in uh, specific uh, figures when you know them. Or you can use the nudge buttons as well. That was another uh, feature of the original unit. But uh -huh. what we added to this uh, to make it more, more musical was the rotary encoder which allows you to right. dial in while you're listening. So okay. it's really, it's a lot more easy to use than the original was in many ways. Well, so for these sorts of de decay times and stuff, uh -huh. it's, a, it's a musical thing, but um, can you also sync to, uh, to a tempo, for instance? Uh, at the moment, we, we, this is only analog in and out, so it's okay. a true recreation of the original. Okay, you would have it. to do that by ear. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, we, we wanted to keep it exactly the same as the original that way. So. Sweet. Um, can we hear one of the, the rarer algorithms then? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so if I go to... What exactly is in there? Uh, we have the image and freeze. So this one, this is one of the, the rarer ones. And what this does is it will add in. So if I leave it at one, it will sample that sound coming in. And then freeze in an in a eternal loop. And that's a really cool effect that can be used for dub and, and many other effects like that. So that's one of the additional Rara 9 algorithms. Excellent. Well, 500 series then. So you need a 500 series uh, yep. rack. 
Mm -hmm. um, but how much does it cost then and when will it be available? Oh, it's available now. Uh, we're on back order at the moment because this is so popular. That Everybody wants one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we'll be shipping uh, February uh, and March. Uh, it's retailing for £995, uh, $1295. And it's available at any of your local dealers or direct from amsneve.com. Joe, thank you so much. No problem.